It's time for Football at Four with 97.3 ESPN.com's Andrew DeCecco. My first allegiance is what will be best for the Philadelphia Eagles and our fans for the next three, four, five years. Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios. It's football at four. Football at four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast and brought to you by Prop Swap, where America buys and sells sports bets. You take your bet and take that ticket and post it on PropSwap.com and then watch the bids come in so you can sell your sports bet to other bettors and make money using PropSwap.com. It's funny, I was talking to a guy today who says, I never heard of this prop swap. I hear you talk about this prop swap, and now me and all my friends are prop swappers. I said, yeah, because you're making money. That's what the whole point of it is. It's a great, great idea. Uh, the guys at PropSwap.com who bring you the 4 o'clock hour of the Sports Bash here on 97.3 ESPN. NFL Draft, we are getting closer and closer. Uh, mock drafts are coming out hot and heavy. They're all over the place. I love getting into them with Andrew DeCecco as uh, when we get – his thoughts on mock drafts and things that could happen, and we get questions from our listeners who are watching on the stream. If you have a draft question that you want to have me ask Andrew DeCecco, send it to me now, and we'll get that to Andrew, who is now with me here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline for another edition of Football at Four. What's going on, Andrew? Hey, Mike. How you doing? All is well. We got uh, about two weeks left to go, so – uh, two weeks from this Thursday, the NFL draft will be here. I know uh, people will say, like, don't you ever get tired of talking about the draft? I say, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you ever get tired of getting into all the scenarios that could happen on draft day? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, this is probably my favorite time of the football season, the whole the whole draft process and assessing team needs and what could may or may not happen. All right. Uh, so I love reading the mock drafts, not because I put a lot of stock in them, just because I like to see what people's thoughts are on who could fall, who gets there. Mel Kuyper, who of course is one of the more notable names when it comes to doing these mock drafts. He put his 4.0 out today, Philadelphia mm-hmm. Eagles, Patrick Sertin, the second falls to number 12. Now, I want to get your thoughts on number one, the fit, and number two, how realistic you see Patrick Sertain falling to number 12. Well, to answer the first part of your question, I do like the fit. I mean, like I was saying before, he is the, of, of all the, the premier corners in this draft, he's the most pro-ready that you can kind of plug right in. He has, uh, he has a very refined skill set. Really active, tough physical defender, sort of the same type of background of, of the defensive backs that Jonathan Gannon has had success with. You look at Xavier Rose, he's somewhat of that makeup, and he, he's very technically savvy. And like I said, he gets his hands on a lot of football, on, on a lot of balls, but you want to see him kind of convert those deflections into uh, in the turn and the interceptions that at the next level. But I mean, I, I look at the I look at the drafts, and I think that the Carolina Panthers at eight would be an awfully uh, awfully nice destination for him and hard for them to pass up. Now that they have their quarterback, they may look to address the defensive side, and their secondary is extremely fluid right now. They don't have a ton there at corner. I mean, um, Dante Jackson's more of a nickel corner. Um, I believe A.J. Boy is going to miss the first couple weeks of the season which is due, to, due to a suspension. And there's not just many, there's not a lot of viable options there. So I think that makes a ton of sense to kind of pair him with Jeremy Chin. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are wondering, I see people in the chat saying, wow, there's no way Patrick Sertan gets by Dallas. Well, in this mock draft, Mel Kuyper has a trade where Dallas gets out of that spot with New England. New England takes a quarterback, which then opens up the extra corner to fall to Philadelphia. And they they actually have Dallas taking J.C. Horn at number 15. So if both Horn and Sertain are on the board, who's your guy? Well, I mean, if you want to go for the higher ceiling, I think you're going to go for J.C. Horn, who I, uh, last time we spoke, I, I kind of likened his skill set when asked to make a comparison to a Jalen Ramsey type of player. Now, Jalen Ramsey was far more polished coming out of college, but I do think that he has the physical, the physicality, that same mentality, the athleticism to grow into that potential role 
and and he has some all pros. But if you want a guy who's going to step right in right now, need very little adjusting to get to, uh, to the NFL level, um, it's going to be a steady starter for you. I think I think that's going to be Patrick Sertan. So it all depends on what the Eagles are really looking for. If you want to go for that immense upside, I think you have to look at J.C. Horn. Yeah, I know uh, I was a little torn on what to do there because a lot of times you figure, okay, someone's going to take Patrick Sertan in the top 10 and he's not going to be there and fixating on Horn. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, what if they're both there? What happens into that in that situation? So I found that to be interesting. Uh, one of the other um, kind of interesting parts about this particular mock draft, which was who was after Philadelphia. So I want to ask you about, all right, Patrick Sertan at 12. What if – it's between a guy like Rashawn Slater, Patrick Sertan. Are you going the offensive lineman, or are you sticking with the corner? Well, I think in that in that scenario, I think you go with the corner because there's many there's many who believe that it would be a J.C. Horn or Patrick Sertan. Either one of those guys could be the cornerback one of this draft class. There isn't like a bona fide uh, top, you know, a definitive answer in that. And Rashawn Slater's. You know, it's Penay Sewell, and then there's a there's a bit of a drop off there. Whereas the cornerbacks, I mean, either one of those guys is going to be they have, they're going to have a long, uh, prosperous career at the NFL level and be ready to step in and contribute early in their careers, which is what their Eagles really need right now. So I think that they really need to add that building block at corner. They they they've struggled to ad- adequately adequately address that over the past over the more than the past decade, and I think they need to get that right. They have they're going to have an opportunity likely to to take one, and I think they just gotta they gotta grab one and uh, and coach them up. Andrew, I saw a mock draft last night, so I'll throw a third te- a name into the mix here. They had the Eagles taking Quiddy Pay at number twelve. Would you be more? Um, willing to take that the edge rusher at 12 or would you still go corner well i mean and and this is about a month ago i, I kind of i likened quitty pay to a top 12 to 15 player and and said that if the eagles were to trade back i thought that he would be you know an interesting option given the you know, the michigan the michigan background his similarities to a brandon graham the versatility and the, he kind of fits the mold of what the eagles really look for in a pass rusher now that said Quiddy Pay at twelve is a little bit, and you know, given the given the players that could potentially be on the board, I think that that would be a little bit of a reach. And that and that it, it depends. The Eagles do they have that propensity to to kind of they always want to strengthen the trenches. So there's always that that's going to be in the back of you know everyone's mind. But I think that they really need to get it right and not overthink things. Take the corner, which by all in all likelihood is going to be the top player on the board. And I think you just got to get that and, and start to build their defense and with some corners with, with a cornerstone, no pun intended. Yeah. Now the reasoning behind taking Quiddy Pay at number twelve was the fact that that's how they built their their Super Bowl defense with the pass rusher, the edge rusher. But Andrew, the defensive coordinator is different. The defensive scheme is going to be different. This team needs corners in the worst way. Yeah, they definitely do, and that's something that needs to be taken into account, Mike. We don't really know what the what this defensive philosophy is going to be. We know that Jonathan Gannon has a defensive back background, which is which leads me to believe that they're going to put a little bit more of an emphasis on strengthening that area relatively early in his tenure. And when you're going to like, and when we're talking about the players that could potentially be available there, I think that'd be a no-brainer to get that in there. And then, like you said, they need corners in the worst way. And based on the the success that he's had with corners of that similar mold. I think you have to get that guy and, and, you know, then, then it becomes their job to make sure that you're coaching them and teaching them properly so they can adequately adjust to the next level. All right. Uh, We do have some questions coming in for Andrew. If you have questions that you want to throw Andrew's way, you can get us in a couple of ways on the text board, 609-403-0973. If you want to hit us up on the text board, if you're watching the live video and you're on the stream, you could just uh, put it in the chat, and then we will get to your questions. Wally wants to know, rumors about the Eagles wanting a quarterback. Is Kyle Trask that guy, and how high would you go to get that quarterback? Round three, when should the Eagles start thinking about getting another quarterback, and who is one that you would target? Well, Wally, I mean, I don't – he certainly – Kyle Trask, that is – wouldn't be in the conversation at, at 12. No, no. I think this is like, if you're getting that guy in the middle rounds. Oh, in the middle rounds. I mean, a Jamie Newman, I think um, would make a lot of sense because 
of his athleticism and his raw ability that I think that you get him in there and Brian have Brian Johnson really sort of refine his skill set and really get the most out of him. I think he'd be an intriguing option to sort of push Jalen Hurts. But, I mean, as far as those middle-round quarterbacks, well, you're not really going to find anybody that's definitively better or offers more upside than Jalen. So I think at that point you're really looking to get a young guy who has some upside, some potential that you're not necessarily depending on, but that's going to keep Jalen Hurts on his toes. So uh, to me that would be uh, in the mold of like a, a Jamie Newman. Yeah, I think um, the, the the second level of quarterbacks in this draft, when do you think that next group will start to go off the board? Is there – are there second round quarterbacks or when do you think that next group of QB starts to go? Yeah, I think it's going to be probably mid second round. I mean, quarterbacks after, after the first round, there's obviously a definitive drop off, but quarterbacks tend to go off the board like the Kyle Trask. Like there's that next tier that's going to start to come off the board in the second round. But, you know, I, I think that um, there's no, there's no after like Mac Jones, there's no quarterback that really like jumps out and it's like, this guy is going to be a future, you know, face of the franchise in my opinion. Right. Chris wants to know, could the Eagles trade back up to get a pits or a chase? Would either one of them be there around eight or nine? Well, I mean, that's interesting. And I wouldn't rule that out certainly because I think that, you know, depending on how the draft board falls, I still have a really hard time thinking that Pitts gets past Atlanta at four. I just have a funny feeling that they're going to kind of add, they want to add a dimension to their offense. They've, they've always had an explosive offense with, with certain skill players. And as far as I think chase, there's a chance that that chase could be there. Um, but I mean, I think you would have to get to, you would have to get back into that, you know, eight, seven range in order to secure that because you're not, I mean, if Chase is there, Dallas is getting him. I mean, Dallas, they, they always go for those flashy weapons, and he wouldn't pass them. Well, if it's, it's Chase and Pitts there, is Dallas, which one are they taking, Chase or Pitts? Well, they're, they're decent enough at receiver. I mean, they just got C.D. Lamb last year, so I think Kyle Pitts would make a lot of sense to them, a lot of sense for them to take him. <laughs> All right, uh, another question. Andrew, what would you think if the Eagles took Kellen Munn in the back half of the draft? Seems like there's some upside there. Very weird-looking throwing motion. That's from Jalen. Yeah. Yeah, well, what's up, Jalen? Um, I, I do I, – Kellen Munn, to me, is a very in- interesting prospect. Obviously, he wouldn't be counted on to really push Jalen. He's not going to be a threat in his first season. It's gonna, not really to his second season, but I really like – the, I, I really have a lot of confidence in their quarterback coach, Brian Johnson. So they, they, they can afford to take a project quarterback like that. And I do think that he has enough skills to sort of, if, if they can hone his skills, I think he can be a legitimate NFL quarterback. But I think that that would be tremendous value adding a player like that. And those are the, when you talk about dart throws, I mean, that's a calculated dart throw that if you get, bring him into the fold, he does have some NFL upside that it's, then it just becomes about refining him, his skill set, getting, getting the throwing motion down and working on certain little subtleties and nuances of his game. But he, he certainly has a lot to like in his game. All right. Uh, another question for Andrew. If you have another question for Andrew, we'll try to fit a couple more in. Text 609-403-0973. Or if you're in the live chat, just leave it over there. Uh, Andrew, would you trade up in front of Dallas to get Patrick Sertain? If that's their guy, if, if that's their top corner on their board, I would leave. I would not leave it up to chance because, you know, knowing the knowing Dallas's tendencies, they just got Trayvon Diggs last year. They're gonna. They need to get younger corner. They're gonna probably be in them. They're, they're certainly in the market for a corner. They need help all over the place. But I mean, I think just to ensure if that's your top guy, you have to do that. Right. So if you think if Patrick Sertan, if you come into this draft, he's your top guy. If he's on the board at eight or nine, you're going to have to jump over Dallas with fear that they could take him because they're not trading with you. Oh, absolutely. If he's your guy and he's within striking distance, you have to do whatever you can to leapfrog Dallas and make sure you secure that. All right, Chris wants to know, would you trust – I can't imagine your answer, your answer would be yes on this, but I'll ask you and let you mm-hmm. answer it. Chris wants to know, would you trust Devontae Maddox to be the Eagles' second corner across from Slay? Not even close. 
Um, I, I, I don't. Does he have a role? Can he play? Think, can he play nickel? Um, I think yeah. I certainly think he can play nickel. But the thing that really stuck out to me, Mike, is the Eagles kind of poked around um, at the the nickel corner from the 49ers. And knowing that Avante Maddox can't play on the outside, but you have a young nickel corner already on your roster, it kind of led me to believe that maybe they're going to have they have some plans to use him at safety and deploy him there. He's kind of a positionless type player, in my my opinion. I think his ultimately his best position is in the, is in the slot, and you have a low cost young option there. But it was kind of curious. It was kind of peculiar to me to see them look at a thirty year old nickel corner from from San Francisco, but. I mean, he can't. He's not an outside corner. He was miscast last year, and they thought they could get by. I thought it was really egregious on their end to part with both Rasul and Sidney Jones before the season. And you probably put all your eggs into Avante Maddox's basket, and he did not deliver. And it was very apparent that teams went their their game plan was to throw at him and attack him early, and he just was not up to the task. And yeah, well, he, he, they can't they can't go into the season with him as their number two, and nor do I think that they will. No, and he wasn't. He wouldn't fit. Jonathan Gannon, you know, the cover two needs a big physical corner. He's a small guy over there. Uh, Last year, I know that you liked the signing of Nikel Roby Coleman. Would you take a shot on bringing him back here and having him work with Jonathan Gannon? Yeah, I mean, if the price is right, it certainly would have to match up because you're not going to break the bank for for certainly for Nikel Roby Coleman. I mean, he's a 5'8 corner that didn't really show you a whole lot last year, but he is a a ball-hawking uh, fundamentally sound corner, and there, there, there's a there's a role for those guys in the NFL. I'd be interested to see what you can get out of him with a different coach and a different system, and see if you can really get him to. Because at his both of his stops with with the Bills and and the Rams, I mean, he was a he looked like a marginally different player than what he did with the Eagles. So I think that I mean, yeah, sure, why not? If the if the money lines up, bring him back in there. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work out, and you part ways at the end of the summer. What wide receiver is going to get drafted too high? Hmm. Well, um, so that's a good question. I'd probably Rashad Bateman or or Kadarius Tony. I would say. I would. Yeah, I would go. With, I would go with Tony from Florida. And you get Percy Harvin vibes from him. And Percy Harvin was certainly a dynamic player in his time, but there's just too much, too many question marks surrounding his game and. How can he be deployed? Is is he going to be able to become a proficient proficient route runner? Those are always, that's always the hardest the hardest transition for young young receivers. Learning an NFL route tree. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can be a dynamic playmaker all you want, but when you're, I think teams sometimes get enamored with the athleticism and the speed, and they don't really look at how they can fit. And I think he's going to get overdrafted because of his sheer athleticism, and kind of like a Cordero Patterson and then you're going to kind of, then you, you have to figure out how you're going to use them. And I think sometimes those guys, they try to shoehorn these guys into the offense and it doesn't quite work out. All right. Another question for Andrew. Uh, Greg Cosell today was absolutely raving about Jason Owe, his athleticism today on inside the birds. He says he's one of the best athletes at the position he has ever evaluated. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, the pro day just solidified, just solidified that. I mean, you talk about lateral movement, his hand usage, his quickness, his his burst off the ball. I mean, this is a guy that's going to be a disruptive force at the next level. He's going to live on the other side of the line of scrimmage, and you need as many. I mean, the game is won in the trenches, and I think that he definitely helped his draft stock. I mean, he's certainly not going to go where many of the mock drafts had him going before his pro day because he just completely blew the doors off that uh, more than some may have even anticipated. So uh, I'm a big fan of his game. And I mean, there's not a definitive number one pass rusher in this draft. I mean, Russo's got a lot of, a lot of love. Cody Pay's got some love. Um, Phillips has gotten some love, but I mean, Jason Owe has, has really made uh made a name for himself and is really going to be in contention for either that first or second spot. Uh, Andrew DeCecco, football at four, NFL draft, 17 days away. We have more draft coverage for you here during football at four. Jeff's back tomorrow. Andrew's here on Thursday. We'll take more of your questions. And Andrew, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda hotline. All right, Andrew, good stuff, man. Yeah, appreciate the questions, guys. All right, we'll do that again on Thursday when Andrew's back for your questions. And he, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda hotline.